Hello, everybody that is listening to me now. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. I have come again to share some time with you. I have come to share once again the ugly experiences of my past with you. Anybody who listened to the first part of this tape will know me better and will understand what I'm talking about. Once again, my name is Chukudalo Onyejeku. In the first part of this tape, I made an open confession on how I was initiated into a secret society by a friend of mine. I also talked about all the evils I committed as a secret court member and finally how God delivered me from the secret society and why I decided to make an open confession to the world so that people will learn from my experience and change from their evil ways. But in this particular episode, I am going to teach you some spiritual facts of life. I will teach you a lot of things you must know in this life to help you avoid evil and also escape from evil doers. I will tell you some of the ways that the occultic people torture the ordinary people so that you can escape their evil practices. I will also talk about fake pastors and churches. Like I promised you in the first part of this tape that I'm going to teach you some spiritual facts of life. So wherever you are, I want you to listen very attentively to what I have to tell you. I am in position to tell you all this today because I was once a secret society member. Therefore, I know their secrets. I know all the secrets in the spiritual world. And all these secrets I know I want to share with you today to help you avoid evil and live a peaceful and normal life in this world. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, there are certain things you as a human being should know about this life. Even you as a born-again Christian or pastor that claims to know all, and when you fail to know all this, you will keep having spiritual problems in your life. Now listen, let me tell you how fake Christians are dealt with in the occultic world. I am talking about those who parade themselves as born again when actually they are not. Please, if you are that kind of person, you know yourself better. Let me advise you. Mind you how you involve yourself in any prayer that is against the powers of darkness. Don't open your mouth in prayers against the powers of darkness, especially at midnight, when it is obvious that some witches and wizards or occultic people are in a meeting. Because if you do so, probably, if coincidentally you are living close to their meeting place, and at midnight you start praying, shouting, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. At the mention of that Holy Ghost fire, any demonic gathering, be it witches and wizards, Occultic or secret society people around that place will be scattered. They will be disturbed very much. But after the prayers, prayers of a hypocrite, prayers of a sinner, the demons that we are disturbed by your prayers will gather again after scattering. Then they will now size you up and check how powerful and faithful you are to God. And when they discover that you are too far from God spiritually, that you are not close to God even, they will then deal with you spiritually and you will begin to suffer physically and you won't even know what is causing your problems or where your problems are from. They will torment you until you forget to shout Holy Ghost fire at midnight. Then they will open your eyes towards going to see a native doctor for solution. And from there, you will belong to them. So you fake born again, be careful and mind how you pray. Let me tell you what to pray. Pray to God to give you the grace to be close to him so as to worship him in truth and in spirit rather than shouting and calling some occultic names that you cannot even withstand spiritually. I don't actually mean that no one can pray against the kingdom of darkness. Rather, it is only those who are really close to God that can pray so and have victory. Believe it or not, I have warned you. Now let me come to another area where many people fall victim to. Please listen to what I have to say here. People who give money to beggars should be very careful because Many people have gotten into different types of problems through this way. Not only beggars. Also, mind how you give money to strangers. I mean physical cash, even if it is ordinary 10 naira, to anybody you don't know very well. Giving cash to strangers is very risky, especially those who will stop you on the way to help them with little money after telling you one fake story of their being stranded or so. If somebody tells you to help him with money, in case you want to really help that person, if you are concerned about that person, to be on safe side, find out what that person really need the money for. Follow him to the place and pay for him. 
yourself instead of giving him your cash. In case that person needs the money for transportation purpose and you want to help him out, just follow that person to the park and pay the transport fare by yourself. Don't give your physical cash to anybody you don't know for safety purposes. Let me tell you, devil does not sleep. He is always watching your every move, always looking for a way to torment you, especially if he discovers that you are not with him. He will find a way of tormenting you. One of his agents may be sent to come to you in form of a beggar, just to collect money from you. The agent might even come like a deformed person, and out of pity you will give him some money for assistance. And through this your money, they will get to you and begin to torment your life spiritually. Then you will start having problems physically. You will be thrown into confusion that you will start running around for solution. And finally they will open your eyes to a native doctor as the last bus stop for solution. The moment you step into the native doctor's house or shrine, you have registered with the demonic world. The native doctor will now tell you a different thing from what brought you. He may tell you that your brother is after your life and business and that you need juju for protection and you stupidly accept and get yourself initiated into what you don't know and lose your soul to the devil. Tomorrow, if your Christian brother sees you and wants to know why you have not been coming to service, you will tell him that you have found a better way or you will tell him that you have seen road that you didn't know that you were very blind before. It is not that you will not give money to beggars or help people, rather, Make sure you pray over whatever you have to give to beggars or strangers before giving it to them. Cover whatever money or anything you want to give to strangers with the blood of Jesus Christ before giving it out. And please, I don't really mean that you will pray to the hearing of the person you are giving the money to. Because later now, some people will just pray openly. I cover this money with the blood of Jesus Christ, then they will give it to the person right in front of that person. No, that is not what I mean. Simply pray in your mind, even as you are bringing out the money from your pocket or purse. Just say in your mind, I cover this money with the precious blood of Jesus Christ against evil. Then give the money to the beggar. If you do so, nothing will happen to you. Even if the person, even if the money is used for evil, that precious blood will always appear to interrupt them. The mere mention of that blood is very powerful. If I tell you what it does to the occultic world at the mere mention of it, you will be shocked. Another thing I will talk about now concerns traders. If you are a trader, be careful with your neighbors in the market because it is that person that knows you that will kill you. Don't allow your neighbor to walk into your shop and begin to touch or examine your goods, especially when the goods are newly purchased. If this happens, don't be surprised that you will end up losing both your profit and capital at the same time and you will blame it on the goods. Not that you won't associate with your neighbors or allow the good ones into your shop. Rather, avoid those of them with shabby character. Especially those who are slow in action. They can be dangerous at the back. Now, I will give a very important message to the mothers. If you are a mother, listen wherever you are. I will tell you how your children are initiated into different demonic societies at infancy, even without your knowledge. I will also use this time to talk about how people get initiated carelessly out of their own mistake. Now listen mothers, if you give birth to your new baby, be very careful and vigilant right there at the hospital bed where you delivered. Because many people will come to see you and the baby. Even that your relation that you trust so much, you don't know where he or she belongs. Therefore every morning, pray and cover your newborn baby gift from God with the blood of Jesus Christ against every evil before people start coming to see you. And also whatever that will be given to the new baby as gift, maybe soap for bedding, milk, powdered milk or anything or even powder for even powder for the body or anything at all. Please before using it on your baby, pray over it and cover it also with that precious blood. In most cases, a desperate evil doer may want to open one of the gifts to use it on your baby there and then. Please stop such action. Don't even feel shy to do so at once or you will regret it all your life. If you use any of such things before praying, it will be too late. If you do as I have said, no evil shall come upon you or your baby and your entire family in Jesus' name. People get themselves initiated through different ways. One of the common ways is that when you go to the market to buy something, especially eatable things, Pay for the thing first before testing it there. 
I'm talking about some eatables like granuts, banana, etc. Especially granuts. Some people will test and yet they won't buy it. It is risky because if the seller of that granite you tested and refused to buy happens to be a witch, whether she is an adult or a little girl, you are in trouble because you will fly to them and be initiated into the coven of black witches that night. But if you buy and pay at once before testing or eating it, you cannot be initiated because there won't be any link between both of you because you paid before testing it. This is a very common way people get themselves initiated ignorantly. Or sometimes little children who are already witches, we buy things and eat along with some longer throat kids around. And at midnight, they all will be initiated into the coven just because they ate granite. Parents, especially mothers, watch over your children in order to avoid evil befalling them because it will affect you, the parents, greatly. You know that every witch wizard is heartless wicked and devilish. I know that some witches and wizards around will not like what I'm telling you, but it is the gospel truth. I can't know the truth and hide it from you because I am no more in the occult and besides God saved my life therefore I have to save others. There are so many other ways people can get initiated into the occultic world, especially our young girls of nowadays. I mean girls who like borrowing wears from their fellow girls. Some shameless ones even go as far as borrowing underwear like pants, bras from their fellow girls and from there they will be initiated. They will see themselves flying at midnight to a place they don't know. Be careful young girl, boroboro is very bad, don't boro or it will get you into trouble. Just manage whatever you have and live a peaceful life because if you get yourself initiated, you will have no peace in your life again and you will start doing things against your wish. Be careful with that your friend you borrow clothes, pants or bras from. Do you know where she belongs? Or have you even asked yourself how she managed to have a lot of clothes and wears? And in most cases, they will be very glad to lend you whatever you ask from them. Just be careful. People get initiated through different ways, but I just mentioned the common ways only. As I go on, I will tell you more. I have many things to talk about today. In the first part of this tape, I told you how to recognize anybody who belongs to a secret society. This time I'm going to tell you the simple ways to defeat a secret society person and evildoers generally. Meanwhile, I have already mentioned few. Now listen, do you know why the secret society people defeat most Christians? The reason is because the secret society people are so faithful and practical in their belief. Therefore, whatever they want their master devil to do for them, he does it for them at once because they do whatever he tells them to do. And they also respect him so much and they are loyal to him. They fear him. If devil asks them to kill, even if it is their mother or son for sacrifice, they do it at once without looking back. If devil asks his servants to worship him every morning before going to work, they will do exactly that because they respect him so much. But if it is on the side of Christians, I mean those who call themselves Christians, the reverse is the case because they don't have a single respect for God. They are not faithful or practical in their belief. God does not do things for most Christians because they don't do what he asks them to do. They disobey God. They don't respect God. They are not loyal to God. God will not tell you to kill your mother or your father or your son. Rather, he will tell you to do some simple things, yet you will not do it. If God tells you to do just a day fasting, maybe 6 to 12 or 6 to 3, that will be the day you will cook your favorite food and drink. But if it is an occultic man, if he is told to go without food because they also fast, he will do exactly that. He practices what he believes to the core. So this is the main point why secret society people defeat Christians a lot. This is why when they want to torment you with their evil powers, God will be far away from you because you don't respect God. But on the other hand, secret society power is powerless. Every power of darkness is powerless because when it jams the power as big as the power of God, it goes down. If only you as a Christian could be a little bit faithful and practical in what you believe. The only thing that kills the faith in you as a Christian is nothing but fear. Let me tell you the truth. The occultic man is the most fearful people on earth but you won't know because 
they make a lot of noise. But inside them, they are so afraid and scared. So if you have problem with an occultic man and he threatens you, don't be afraid. Threaten him back. If he tells you that you will die, tell him also that he is the one that will die. If he says he will kill you, tell him also that you will kill him. Make sure that you return any bad word that he throws at you. If he causes you, return it to him. He is trying to put fear in you and nothing else. He is trying to put fear into you before dealing with you so that whatever he evokes upon you will happen at once. But when he sees that you are not afraid of him or his threats and that you are faithful and practical in your belief, he will withdraw into his shell and resolve to make peace with you. Because if he goes ahead to use his occultic powers on you, it will bounce back at him. This is because you, re you rejected his evil powers boldly to his face and your spirit is very strong as well. But if he threatens you and you go home thinking over and over it, believing in yourself that you are in trouble simply because an occultic man threatened you, if he evokes any evil upon you, it will affect you because there is already fear in you and your spirit has become weak suddenly. Don't be afraid of them. After all, they have no power of their own. Rather, they evoke powers into them. They evoke whatever power they use. So my brother, if an occultic man threatens you today, don't be afraid, even if you are a sinner. Go down on your knees and pray to God your Father to forgive your sins and come to your rescue and fight for you. After all, it doesn't take long process for God to forgive sins. Remember the criminal on the cross of Calvary, how he made heaven right there. If you do so, God will fight for you because it is God's fight. I've given you the top secret. The same thing happens when your name is taken to a shrine. I mean, when your name is taken to an idol or a deity, just like many of our people do these days, when you transact business or have any dealing with them, maybe if they feel cheated, instead of settling it over man to man or in the law court, they will take the matter to a shrine so that the deity will fight for them. Listen, let me tell you, the moment you become afraid that your name has been taken to a shrine, any action of that deity will affect you. But when you believe that the deity cannot do anything, especially if you are innocent of the allegation, nothing will ever happen to you. Don't listen to people when they are talking of how strong the deity could be. You see, that deity you are afraid of, nothing is there. It is being controlled by a fellow human being. It obeys the instructions of that person serving it. And it is that person that is serving it that will send it to hunt and kill you. And that will be if your spirit is not strong enough to withstand it. Meanwhile, always try as much as you can to be upright in whatever you do and you won't be having problems in life because God himself will always be there to fight for you wherever your name is taken to. If not for the big fight God fights for his people in this world spiritually, people will be dropping dead every moment because devil and his agents are looking for an excuse to nail the children of God. There is another way that the occultic or secret society people manipulate the ordinary people that I will tell you now. And many people fall prey to this always. You see this contribution of money people organize. Some call it weekly contribution or monthly contribution. Listen, let me tell you, evil and occultic people like us, when I was in the secret society, also come pretending to be interested in it. But our real aim there would be, would only be to contribute our evil money so that whoever collects his own turn for that month or borrow from the money because we also lent money to people from the contribution. So that person will be in trouble as soon as he collects or borrows from the money. When I was in the main market in Onisha, I used this medium to liquidate many people's money. In some cases, even, the occultic people will organize something like this themselves, pretending to be interested in lending money to people to assist them in doing business with the money and returning it with little interest. When people borrow this type of money, you know, they will have to deposit a collateral that will worth more than the money. But they will be surprised that they will lose the whole money at the end of the month. Not even the capital will be safe. It is not as if you cannot borrow money from such contribution or collect money when it is your turn to collect. But there is a secret there. I will tell you everything. You see, when you collect or borrow such money and you suspect there is evil with it, don't use it at once. Rather, first of all, 
deposit it with your bank before using it. If you don't have an account with any bank, look for somebody who has and let him deposit it in his account. Or as a child of God, pray and cover the money with the blood of Jesus Christ before using a cup out of it. But if you know that your faith cannot carry the prayer, better find a way and deposit the money in the bank before using it. Because it is not everybody that calls himself a child of God that can pray and have faith in the prayer. If you use one couple out of it before praying over it, the prayers will be useless. Or if you use one couple out of the money before depositing it with the bank, maybe you may collect small money from it for transport to the bank. Depositing the money with the bank then will be useless because you have used part of the evil money. Therefore, it will affect you very well and you will lose everything. Traders mostly should beware so that you don't become a victim. Now let me come to food sellers, restaurant operators, those of you who don't cook at home, who depend on mama put or restaurant for their food, beware. Be careful with the place you go to get your food because occultic people and witches are also into the food selling business. You may not believe but it is true. You see those restaurants where you have to wash your own plate by yourself before you can get food. Those restaurants where a lot of people rush to as if they serve food for free. A lot of people line up waiting to get their food. Let me tell you, they use evil powers to charm most of you, but you don't know. There is something they are given to put in their food, that when you eat their food, you will, keep, you will keep on coming. And no matter what you eat there, you will never be satisfied. And you will, and you will keep asking for more. You will never go to any other place to eat, and you won't feel cheated at all. You will be spending too much money on every meal without knowing it. They can also be hired easily to poison your food if your enemy targets you very well. Be careful and look for decent places around to eat good food and be free. But mind you, you the occultic woman that use evil powers to charm people to your restaurant. I am warning you because that your evil powers will not last forever. One day it will lose its potency and people's eyes will open and everybody will run away from your restaurant then you will lose everything. And do you know the nemesis of such art? You will become as poor as a church rat because that evil powers you are using will boomerang and turn against you. And the worst of it all is that no man of God can pray you out of the mess your life will become. Nobody will come to your restaurant to eat again. The opposite of what was happening to your business before will now begin to happen. I mean, during the time people were rushing to your restaurant, the reverse will now be the case because nobody will come again to patronize you like before. The same thing is applicable to those who are using evil powers to do their different businesses. You know yourself wherever you are, including those who call themselves pastors, but they are using powers of darkness to run their churches. I will still come to that when I will talk about fake pastors and churches.